Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. I got to say it's been a long, hard winter for New Zealand with inflation, which has driven interest rates and left people struggling to make ends meet at the end of the week. We understand that because we've watched since the previous government kicked off a cost of living crisis three years ago. But with the CPI or inflation down to 2.2% for the last quarter, with rates coming down to 4.75 at the Reserve Bank and more significant cuts forecast to take pressure off people's mortgages, we can truly say that at this time of year, the days are getting longer, the sun is getting brighter in the sky, and some hope is finally returning to New Zealand. And I'm proud to stand here leading the ACT Party as part of this coalition government that is working hard every day for New Zealanders. We are saving money and doing more with less, just as our predecessors in the government did less with more. We are improving the services that people receive so they get better education, they're more likely to attend and they're safer on the streets. And we're being accountable for what happens in ways that are totally foreign to New Zealanders had they only watched the previous government for the last three years. And Mr Speaker, let me count the ways and give you some tangible examples. Yesterday I was thrilled to attend a launch and a celebration of a new initiative, in fact a new kind of initiative, where Kiwi businesses, our government department in the form of the Ministry of Education and civil society, the likes of KidsCan and the Heart Foundation, have come together and cooperated to deliver the Healthy School Lunch Programme at half the price and I've got to say, having sampled some of the goods, I would say better quality than was previously delivered. And the indignance of the left, the whinging, the moaning, the criticism, the indignance, it couldn't possibly be true, but it is true, and it's a tribute to the way that those groups of New Zealanders came together and worked to get a better result. I watched Karen Chua show real accountability. Last year, there were 24, 15 incidents in 2023 where kids got up on the roof at OT facilities. Karen rolled up her sleeves and started also strengthening the buildings and improving the culture at those facilities. This year, there's been one such incident. And as the minister, she was up there on the first flight yesterday on site, making sure the situation was dealt with. And they were down before lunchtime, not to have KFC for lunch, I might add, Mr. Speaker. He's smiling at that. And he knows that actually we have a new style of government of accountability and a new broom in town. I watched Brooke Van Velden announce a, a memorandum of understanding between the Department of Eternal Affairs, for which she's responsible, and the Teachers' Council to share information and identify any person that is a risk to children around sexual offences faster than they would have been under the previous government. Simple stuff, some would say a minor detail, but absolutely critical for the safety of children, particularly in the wake of the Royal Commission of Inquiries. Shocking findings, doing the business in little and large ways every day. I've watched Nicole McKee deliver on three strikes. People criticised the way it was introduced to Parliament. So this government did something, we listened and we toughened it up and we say to the people who want to commit three serious or violent sexual offences, Duncan Webb said, listen to who? The victims of the crime, Duncan. The people your government should have been listening to for the last five years but didn't as we saw offences rise endlessly. And so now we can say to those serious sexual and violent offences, your previous strikes will count under the new law. And the Duncan Webbs of the world say, oh, there'll be more people in jail. Yes, Duncan, that's the point. We want them in there so the rest of us law-abiding New Zealanders are safe out here. I watched Andrew Hoggard, one of the true farmers of this <laughs> parliament, one of the few true farmers of this parliament, announce that SNAs, those violations of farmers' property rights, are having the pause button pushed and then they too will be gone, just like those kids down from the roof. And who could forget Mark Cameron cheering the, the primary industries committee, ensuring that banks and the regulators of banks are held accountable for the costs they put on farmers. 
Mr Speaker, all of these initiatives are held together by that simple idea that no matter who you are or your ancestors were, you have a right to make a difference in your own life and the lives of those you care about in this great country. Thank God for the ACT Party.